I want to talk about spirit uh, as related to the five spiritual powers. All I want to do is cite a passage by Abdul Baha where he talks about spirit. He says, it has been before explained that spirit is universally divided into five categories, the vegetable, the animal, the human spirit, the spirit of faith, and the Holy Spirit. The human spirit, which distinguishes man from animal, is the rational soul. And these two names, the human spirit and the rational soul, designate one thing. There is, however, a faculty in man which unfolds to his vision the secrets of existence. It gives him a power whereby he may investigate the reality of every object. It leads man on and on to the luminous station of divine sublimity and frees him from all the fetters of self, causing him to ascend to the pure heaven of sanctity. This is the power of the mind, for the soul is not of itself capable of unrolling the mysteries of phenomena. But the mind can accomplish this, and therefore it is a power superior to the soul. Well, this is a very interesting passage uh, to me, and I certainly have to meditate about it. Uh, I also have uh, the link on uh, on the screen here of where this uh, passage came from. I want to touch on a couple more topics. I would like to compare how the language of the arts functions compared to the spoken language. I want to uh, talk about the importance of storytelling. And this is all, of course, related to the five spiritual powers. Okay, time for a little bit of music. This music is set to a prayer by Abdu'l-Bahá dedicated to children. We know that children are born with vivid imaginations. Let's help these children continue to develop this spiritual power. If we compare the language of words to the language of music, think about this. It takes about 10,000 words uh, to constitute the active vocabulary of native speakers with a higher education, and 20,000 words uh, for those who really can understand literature, such as a novel by a notable author. Let's take my piano keyboard. One octave has 12 notes. Maybe a simple song might use eight or nine of these notes. The possible mathematical combination of just nine digits is one billion. In language, the possible combinations of the use of words is very limited because there are many uh, rules of grammar. In music, there are many theories about how music can be structured, but very little music follows these theories to the letter. In the spoken language, no matter who says the word, how fast or loud it is spoken, the meaning of the word does not change. There are, of course, a few exceptions. In music, you can play one note in many ways. You can vary the rhythm, the speed, the volume, uh, or the instrumentation, and everything changes. In spoken language, you cannot speak many words together because no one will understand. In music, one note can be harmonized with others and combined with many instruments and eventually be played by a 90-piece orchestra. So you get my point. The possibility of expression in music dwarfs that of spoken language. There was a famous painter named Edward Hopper who said it like this. 
If I could say it in words, I wouldn't have a need to paint. The ability to make art, which includes music, dance, poetry, etc., is part of every culture on earth and has existed since there were humans. How is art connected to the five spiritual powers? My interpretation is that there is a connection between emotion, intelligence, and the five spiritual and physical powers. I'm not exactly sure how, but they seem to be interconnected. I have a flow chart here on the screen, and you can take a look at that. Emotions play a big part in this need to express ourselves. In our evolution, emotions have also played a big part in our survival. Humans are gifted with a much more complex set of emotions than other animals. Our emotions often confuse us, and I think it is interesting to read about how our emotions are tied to our evolution. If you like this topic, I'm posting an article on the subject here. It's in uh, Psychology Today magazine. Quoted by Daniel Levitin, it's, he says, Whenever humans get together for any reason, there's always music. This quote reminds me of a story. It's about a gig I did uh, one time. I got a call for a Jewish couple. They were having a dinner party. I said, okay. I put the date down in my book and uh, didn't think any much about it. They called and they said, we're going to have a bris and we would like that you play for that. I said, okay, no problem. So then reality kind of hit me and I said, what the heck do you play for a bris? I had never played for one, and I don't even know of any musicians who have ever had to play for that. So I said to myself, what do you play when a baby's masculinity is being put to the knife? I thought, well, this is kind of weird. So eventually I picked a, a Bach prelude to play. is kind of quiet and slow. And uh, I guess it turned out successful because the uh, cries of pain were rather minimal. You get my point. You never know what music can soothe. So I would like for you to just Google uh, the importance of the arts. Uh, you can also Google uh, the Baha'i compilation on the arts. Study these things. Meditate on how you can use uh, the arts to uh, help the cause of Baha'u'llah. Okay. Telling stories. In my opinion, the second most powerful technique for teaching the faith after the reciting of the holy text, is to tell stories about the faith and other stories also. All great speakers, including Baha'i speakers, use stories in their talks. Stories, why? Stories enhance and stir the imagination, the first spiritual power. When the listener sees the story in his mind, he imagines the characters and pictures in the scenery. He perceives the plot determines its morality, judges the outcome, and finally tries to comprehend the meaning and purpose of the story. If the listener is attracted to the story, he will naturally memorize all or part of it. This is how stories inspire and incorporate all of the five spiritual powers mentioned by Abdu'l-Baha. Storytelling is an important part of every culture. Stories don't necessarily have to be true but they usually have a moral lesson or make us laugh. In other words, stories provoke emotions by way of the images that are created. Whether stories are true or fantasy or told in a song, without stories, great culture cannot last long. Well, I just invented that. Let me say that again. Whether stories are true or fantasy or told in a song, without stories, great culture cannot last long. Example, if I say in the Baha'i faith we believe that men and women should be treated equally, people will usually have a positive reaction. If I say men and women are like the wings of a bird, if one wing is weak, the bird cannot fly, one automatically pictures a bird and the teaching is more clear. If I tell the story of a young woman named Zainab who decided to join the early believers in a battle against the attacking forces of the Persian government, who dressed as a man, fought as a man, and died because she wanted women to be treated more equally, people will have another reaction. People can be brought to tears with a story like this. This proves how powerful the imagination is, the first spiritual power. So storytelling can be very, very effective in uh, relating a concept to anyone. 
Well, thanks for listening to my talk. Hope you use and practice the five spiritual powers. I'm going to close with a little quote by Baha'u'llah and some music. There's a little story behind this quote. This is about uh, part of the quote that says that all created things may be regenerated and made new. This is at the end of the quote. I was present when an ex-member of the House of Justice uh, was asked what he thought this uh, quote meant. And he gave an example of how you can take sand and turn it into silicone and actually make a computer that can uh, calculate billions of calculations in a second. So this example is very interesting because think about something as common as sand. It's all over the whole world. It can be transformed into a piece of technology that has basically changed how we work. Okay, here's the quote. The divine springtime has come, O most exalted pen, for the festival of the all-merciful is fast approaching. Bestir thyself and magnify before the entire creation the name of God and celebrate his praise in such wise that all created things may be regenerated and made new. Thank you very much for listening. Alawabha. Immerse yourselves in the ocean of my words that ye may unravel its secrets and discover all the pearls.